Hey guys, welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen, also known as Volenvine on Ravelry, on Instagram, and pretty much everywhere else on the web. Uh, thanks so much for tuning into my my little place on the interwebs, uh, the Yarngasm podcast. I am back from vacation. Uh, Dennis and I, we took a week off and we went up to Maine uh, for about a week. Uh, we did an Airbnb there and just had a really nice relaxing time. I know we just came back from another vacation in Cape Cod, so it was kind of a little bit back to back. I really don't know why we scheduled it that way. I think it had to do with Dennis's vacation schedule, but anyway, long story short, we had a great time. I'm back recording this week, so thank you for bearing with me as I took a little time off. Uh, I think we are good as far as vacationing, beach, lobster, nature is concerned. So I'm happy to be back getting into the swing of things. I'm not gonna lie, I really did miss my craft room, even though I took a lot of crafts with me, which I'll talk more about in the blather segment at the end of the episode. I really did miss having all of my things, my tools, my supplies, my, my, my stash. I really missed having that all around me where I can just, you know, grab for whatever's inspiring me at the moment. But, um, you know, you do need to go on vacation and uh, it was it was really nice to get away get out of the city, eat lots of seafood, and just enjoy. Yes, I'm back. So I have a lot to share with you uh, because I skipped a week, so you know, that stuff kind of piles up. I have a lot of things to share with you this week, so let's get into things. But first, uh, just a quick word from my sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, tech, and more, even sewing and the fiber arts. As you know, I'm improving my photo skills and doing so by binge watching photography classes on Skillshare. I just finished a class called Fundamentals of DSLR Photography and loved Justin Bridges' teaching style. I learned so much about the exposure triangle in a very little amount of time. And because I know you love learning new things too, I partnered up with Skillshare and they are offering my viewers two months free to try their platform. So give Skillshare go and learn something new. Just click on the link in the description box below, entering the code at checkout, and enjoy! And thanks Skillshare! I have a finished object, you guys! It is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. I finished this. Well, it's it's not completely finished until you photograph it and it's up on Ravelry. So it's, I want to say, 99% done. 99.9% done. But my smocket shawl is done. It is finished, it is finished, and it is a schlinket. It is, it is huge. It fades into three colors, and oh my gosh, look how I, the contrast on this thing is, I love the effect. So here you have like this lighter shade, this is La Bianna May, uh, in her dusk colorway, and then it goes all the way into Skein Queen in her Mountain Heather colorway, and then it fades into this really awesome uh, chocolate chambord colorway by The Woolen Rabbit and I just freaking love the effect of it. So I plan to wear this a lot during fall and winter, so poof. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, how do you wear it? It's huge. What I notice a lot about Stephen West patterns, a lot of his shawls are big. They're, they're schlankets, they're all schlankets. My excuse me shawl was a schlanket, my eyeball shawl was a schlanket, all designed by Stephen West, and the smocket shawl is no exception. Uh, and yeah, it's all fingering weight yarn, all merino singles, and oh, I love it. I love it so much. There are a plethora of mistakes in here, and I know there are certain parts of the border where there's one section of the border which I cannot even find anymore because it's it's so well hidden, and that's why I didn't really go back. But there was a portion of um, the edge where you make the smock it, where you, I want to call it the smock it stitch, where you make a smock stitch, and yeah, apparently I totally missed it, but you know, you really can't see it. It's it's there. It's there if you really look hard, but honestly, it didn't bother me, so I just, I left it in. I think this is one of my favorite makes of 2018. It's just, it was just such a fun, mindless, not mindless, but potato chip knit, and you know, just like one more row, one more row, and it was exactly what I needed when I cast it on, and it is exactly what I needed. It's exactly what I need now that it's bound off, so I'm very, very happy, and I'm gonna try and show you one of these smock shawls. Let me see, a really cool part. Um, yeah. I can't get over how cool this shawl turned out. I wanna make, I wanna make more, maybe one like a brighter color, I don't know, but Highly recommend this pattern, so simple. Um, and yeah, a lot of people are very apprehensive about casting it on because they think it's brioche. It's not brioche, it's just knit and purl stitches to make either a rib stitch or just alternating garter stitches. I'm very, very pleased with the way this turned out. Um, and yeah, like I said, I blocked it 
down in the dye dungeon. Uh, I didn't get any photos, unfortunately, but uh, I actually ran out of blocking wires. It was just so long, or I don't even... There are my blocking wires. They were in my craft room the whole time. I have a whole tube of them, and for some reason, I only had two blocking wires down in the basement. But um, anyway, it took up four, uh, no, I wanna say six giant uh, two by two um, blocking mats, and then I used T-pins to make the the little um, Pico, Pico teeth, if you wanna call them, the little Pico nubs, uh, to stretch them out. Uh, by the way, you guys, the bind off, the bind off took me forever. It is a when I was when all was said and done when I was ready to bind off there were about 600 stitches on the needles, which is a lot. It's a lot of a lot of a lot of stitches. But anyway, hoping to get some really nice photos uh, of said shawl so you can see it in all its full glory. I don't think I'll have time today to take photos, but uh, keep an eye on my Instagram account and on Ravelry, uh, and I will post some photos of me modeling this shawl. Uh, in the near future. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to, you know, having fun with my new camera and getting some fun shots of me modeling, modeling my smocket. So anyway, Stephen West, if you were watching, and I highly doubt you are, thank you. Thank you for making an amazing pattern. Uh, next up is a new cast on that I did not talk about. Uh, but as I mentioned, Dennis and I went on vacation and for some reason that just meant new cast on. I cast this on on the drive up to Maine and that is the Wick Shawl by Helen Stewart and I got so much done on this while we were there and I took some photos of it on the dock where we were staying and it was just the perfect vacation project. I don't know what it is about Helen Stewart patterns but whenever we go away on vacation I just want to cast on a Helen Stewart pattern. Um, last, I think it was last year, Dennis and I went to Barbados and I brought, what was it, the uh, amulet shawl and Again, perfect vacation it. But here's what I have so far. It's not incredibly fady as her version. Um, I used some, you know, pretty contrasty colors for this one. But um, when I laid the skeins out, they fade really well together, and I really like the way that they were uh, playing. So I just, I just went with it. So color A, it might look really familiar. This is uh, again La Bien Ma in her dusk color. Uh, as I mentioned, I picked up two skeins of this at Vogue Knitting in New York this year, and so I had two skeins. I have no idea why I got two skeins, but apparently it was meant to be. So. Yeah, this is La Viam Anime in her dust colorway, and then this is uh, Ushushita in her midnight colorway, and I also picked this color up at Vogue Knitting Live, uh, and then yeah, I'm going to be using Jinx Yarn in her vampire colorway, so here's that, and then that's going to be the edging. So I think those really play, they, they kind of fade, but they don't, and I, li I kind of like that there's a little bit of contrast. But yeah, this is an incredibly simple pattern. It's pure, pure garter stitch, and all you're doing is fading three different colors into each other. At the end of the shawl, there's a little bit of lace, but nothing too extravagant. Um, and yeah, I just think it's, I think it's genius because there, it looks like there's, some, you know, a lot going on, but really you're just, you're just fading. You're fading and knitting. So knit, 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 knit. Your gold. And this is living in my. Home Row Fiber Co. <laughs> project bag. And you guys, this has been going with me everywhere this summer. Um, this bag is just like, I love it. I love it so much. Ah, anyway, uh, yeah, that is pretty much all of my whips at the moment. Whips, FOs. I guess I will talk a little bit about spinning. Uh, this is getting a little toasty, so I'm just, I'm just gonna fold it up and fold it, fold it, fold it. Oh, this thing, look how, look how long this thing is. It's so long. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It looks, it looks so pretty folded up. Okay, all right, enough, Kristen. Enough, enough. Moving on to spinning. Uh, as I mentioned, I brought a couple of projects with me on vacation. I brought some spinning, I brought my weaving, I brought my knitting. Um, I didn't really get much weaving done. I think I put maybe five picks into my, my loom when I was there, uh, which, which is fine. It, the, it wasn't that... It wasn't heavy at all to transport. I just popped it in a large tote bag and brought it with me. The thing is so portable. It's 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 nuts. That's, you know, weaving, that's what's awesome about weaving on a tiny rigid head loom. But anyway, I digress. We we're talking about spinning and <laughs> Here's my Bosworth spindle. Um, by the way, I just published, if you're not familiar, I published a video earlier this week uh, giving you a tour of my, 
my drop spindle collection, which you can see in the background. In case you missed the episode, I'll pop a link at the top so you can click on it and watch uh, whenever you like. But anyway, um, yes, my Bosworth spindle, the spindle that I am currently obsessed with. Uh, I brought this with and spun some really deep stash fiber that I purchased, I don't know how long ago. Uh, but this is by Ren and Ollie. Let me show you. And it's appropriately mauve. <laughs> so it's, in the, it's still in the bag. Um, and how, I think I've just been coveting it. I, you know, spun a little bit of it at some point, but I was such a newbie spinner that I was like, I don't want to ruin it. I want it to be perfect. Um, but these are Rolags and I just want to take them out so you can see them. They are oh, so pretty. It's like a mauve, mauve Cinnabon. It's just so pretty. Um, and there's like some, there's even some mauve Stellina in here. So, oh, Dan Angelina. What's the difference between Stellina and Angelina? I can, are they the same thing or? Anyway, I can probably just Google it. But uh, yeah, anyway, these are Sprinkles, Sprinkles, Bumps, and Bats. Uh, the color is called Latte. Uh, and in each Rolag, there's Angelina, Merino, and Tessa Silk. And the whole pack comes with 120 grams of, of fiber. So, you know, you do the math. You can get a lot of yardage out of this, depending how fine you spin it. Uh, but yeah, this was just fun to noodle around with, you know, when I didn't feel like knitting on vacation. Uh, you know, Dennis was making lobster and I was hanging out on the deck just spinning and photographing my spinning. And yeah, anyway, a lot of fun to be had with that. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out Ren and Ollie. She has some really beautiful, I, I believe she's based in, I could be wrong. She's based in Australia. But anyway, um, she's really talented and has some really gorgeous fiber in her Etsy shop. I'll, I'll pop a link to it in, in the show notes below um, in case you wanna get your mitts on some of that. I guess we're gonna move right along into sewing because the elephant, and I don't know why I call it the elephant in the room. I guess it makes sense, you know, it's like, I'm wearing something, you've seen me take photos of it and post it online saying, look at what I just finished sewing. So it's like, uh, when's she gonna talk about that? When is she gonna talk about that? I'm gonna talk about it now. <sighs> Way too much caffeine this morning, <laughs> anyway. But yes, I am wearing a new dress that I made. It is the Klein dress by Callie, Callie Faye, by the Callie Faye collection on Etsy. I think she's just Callie Faye, but anyway, her collection is called uh, the Callie Faye collection and you can find her patterns on Etsy and I really, really love, love her style. She's got a lot of great um, like modern, modern inspired fashions. Uh, and this one, love it was so e like and i'll talk a little i'll talk a little bit more about the construction because i did i did hit a wall with it but in hindsight it is a super quick super easy beginner friendly pattern that i would recommend to any newbie sewist um there you know there are a couple of things that you might have to you know wrap your brain around at first but honestly like the construction is super easy it was only i believe Four, pa four pattern pieces total. Um, so yeah, let me stand up and get all awkward in front of the camera for you guys. But it's just a very loose fitting, uh, airy, breezy dress, summer dress, sundress. Um, and it has a gathered skirt right here. And it goes, um, I think I'll sit back down. Uh, the original pattern I think goes below the knee, but I shortened it to come right above the knee. Uh, because that's the length that I like my, or it's actually a little bit more above the knee. I want to say like three inches above the knee, which is fine. But uh, I want to actually carry this into fall and winter because I can totally see myself chucking this over a pair of black leggings and boots um, and just putting a nice little cozy cardigan, knitted cardigan preferably, uh, over it. Um, and yeah, it also has um, adjustable straps, although the pattern does give you the option to have fitted straps. So you can either go for the adjustables or uh, the, you know, fit to size straps, if that makes sense. Uh, I went for the adjustable straps, which was a headache. I'm not gonna lie. It's <laughs> adjustable straps are a little tricky to wrap your brain around because you have to be aware um, of where your straps, what, slots your straps are going into and loops. And when I thought that I was all finished, I realized that I twisted the strap and had to unpick it and redo it. I really like adjustable straps, I think, because sometimes some bras uh, sit a little higher on your chest and some sit a little lower. So if you have those, if you have the option to adjust your straps, uh, that really comes in handy. Um, so anyway, just a little tip there. Other notes on this dress is, <laughs> did not make a muslin. 
I will never learn. Do not try to lecture me because I just, it'll go in one ear and out the other. I just don't like making muslins. However, you really should make a muslin. It's one of those things where it's like, do as I say, not as I do type of things. And you know, I, I pay the price sometimes, you know, it's, it's Russian roulette when I don't make a, a muslin. And this was cutting it very, very close pun totally intended. But I had a lot of confidence myself because I, I saw that the, the pattern itself was very simple, uh, some very straight, clean cut lines. The pattern itself is supposed to be loose fitting, uh, airy and flowy. Uh, you don't have to worry about fit too much. And the fact that the model on the pattern or the model, uh, you know, modeling, modeling the dress on the pattern uh, is actually had some very similar body measurements to mine. So just going by that, I was like, okay, you know, this, this looks like it's gonna fit me. So finished the entire dress. Uh, I didn't even bother trying it on as I was sewing it. And when I tried it on before I even hemmed it, um, it was a tent. It was huge. It was ginormous on me. And Dennis, you know, when I was trying it on in the other room, uh, Dennis came and goes, what the heck is that? <laughs> It was it, like it, honestly like it wasn't too big, but it, I had a good like um, extra inch on either side that could be taken in. So thankfully, I was sweating bullets. I almost like lost it at that point. I'm like, no. But the fact that it was bigger means that I could take it in, and the fact that it was a very simple pattern made my life a whole lot easier. So. All I know, and I even researched this online, what I did was I just cinched it, I just pinned, tried the dress on inside out um, and pinned it on either side. So I pinned it on either side and just went up, 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 down, 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 and and just stitched it. It worked out really well except on one side because it can become a little bit more involved, but honestly the gathers kind of um, camouflaged where the stitching would be. Anyway. I wasn't too bothered with it. And the fact that it's a very busy pattern, it camouflages the mistake very well, I think. But you can kind of see over here, there's like a little fold and then the the seams don't really line up exactly, but I'm not going to beat myself up over it. I think after eight tries of trying to get it just right, it was one of those situations where it's like, you know what, done is better than perfect. So. Anyway, uh, but on this side, it turned out very well. I'm very happy with the way this side turned out. It was perfect. But then I was also very conscious about the placement of the pattern. I made sure that uh, this little, what do you, paisley doodle right here was center um, and everything was like centered and not just kind of all over the place and wishy-washy. Um, I'm trying to be a lot more conscious of um, what do you call it? print placing on fabric whenever I cut out pattern pieces. It can just give a garment that extra oomph, if that makes any sense. Uh, so yeah, that is my Klein dress. Uh, I hope to make another one very soon, maybe in a little bit more flowy fabric. Uh, this is cotton lawn, so it's not as stiff as quilting cotton. It's a little thinner uh, and has a little bit more airy, it has a little bit more drape, I want to say. It's very lightweight. Uh, I would probably make another one of these in like a crepe or a chiffon. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I highly recommend the pattern. Give it a try. Again, you can read my post about it over on my blog, uh, strangebrewcreative.com. Uh, and yes, so okay. This is gonna be a long episode, I have a feeling. But uh, yes, time to move on to stash enhancement because I I, I, have, a, I have a wee haul, a wee haul. Just a little one. But yeah, the first one is sewing related. Uh, on our way up to Maine, uh, Dennis and I stopped off at Portsmouth, which is a town in New Hampshire, which is right before the bridge that takes you into Maine. So I'm very geographically impaired, so I could have gotten that all wrong. But anyway, uh, we, we did stop in Portsmouth, which is a really cute little town. Uh, they're very big on their cafes and coffee, and they have... and. and I stumbled on a really adorable fabric shop. Uh, it's called Porth Portsmouth Fabric, and I, I lured Dennis into there. I uh, just, you know, I was like, it's a fabric store, we gotta check it out. And I was super impressed with it, guys. They had so many really great fabrics. Um, I, unfortunately, we couldn't spend too much time in there because de we, we were parked and the meter was gonna run out, so I really had only about like 15 minutes to kind of run around and see what I wanted to get. Um, so I got this really 
I could not say no. Unicorns! It's unicorn fabric. And yeah, this is cotton and steel. I've never seen this. I, apparently this has been out for a while, this fabric print. Because I didn't have any garment in mind for it, I don't think I would wear this on my person actually, but I thought it would make a really cute project bag, so I did get a yard of it to make probably a, a project bag, um, or maybe, who knows, some boxer shorts. Who knows? The possibilities are endless when it comes to sewing. So yeah, that was my mini fabric haul, but they also had a pattern that I've been ogling for a while online, uh, and the fact that they had it there meant I did not have to print out a million pieces of paper and tape them all together. It's, it's all in one little package. Um, but this is the Lark Tea by Grainline Studio, and I want to make one of these using some stripey fabric that I have, some stripey jersey fabric, and I want to make this version right here. And I haven't decided if I want to make these sleeves or short sleeves, so I don't know. Still playing around with some ideas, but uh, I'm very happy that I, I got my mitts on the physical pattern. Um, Greenland Studio makes some really, really great patterns. She actually has the, uh, or I, I, she actually has, I made the moss skirt, which I love. I have not, I will be totally honest, I haven't worn it much. That's the, um, I'll try and post a photo of it here, but unfortunately I haven't uh, made much use of it this summer. However, I think in winter, wearing that skirt over a pair of leggings will be awesome. So anyway, yeah, really love that. I'm a huge fan of their patterns. They're just really well written and they're, they're basic staple wardrobe pieces basically. So yeah, really looking forward to making one of these. Uh, we did go to Halcyon, uh, which is in Bath, Maine. And this place is amazing guys. Uh, it is, it's, it's more geared towards weavers, uh, a lot of their fiber, uh, but they do have a really big selection of local Maine yarn. So um, unfortunately, I did not come away with anything for myself, uh, but I did pick up a couple of things for my mother-in-law. Carol, you've got some, some really nice yarn coming your way. When Dennis joined me, uh, you know, I was saying, you know, I really want to knit you a sweater, you know, pick out some yarn and I will make it happen. No if and ors or no, no if and ors or buts. I will make you a sweater. I will finally knit you the husband sweater. We came across this shelf of Peace Fleece and um, he was really taken by it and he picked out this really, really gorgeous colorway and here it is. So I got a whole sweater quantity's worth of Peace Fleece and this is their uh, fo Fio, I cannot pronounce that, but anyway, it's their, uh, it's worsted weight yarn. It's 80% uh, merino rambouillet wool from Cottage Hill Farm in Ohio, Cook Farm in Cayenne River Reservation in South Dakota, and the Navajo Nation in Arizona, and 20% Texas mohair. I really like that they put where all this fiber is coming from, but their mill is in Porter, Maine, so that's really, really cool. In each skein, there is approximately 200 yards, four ounces. It's just this really beautiful, woolly tweed yarn, and it has, because of the mohair, it has like this ever so light halo around it. So after browsing Ravelry, like you do for a man's sweater, I stumbled on the Rift the Rift pullover by Brooklyn Tweed, or Jared Follett, I should say. Um, and I showed it to Dennis and he really liked it and it was a done deal. It was a done deal. So I got nine skeins, <laughs> nine skeins of this, which I think is a little bit more than enough, um, which is fine because I'll have enough left over to knit myself a hat or Dennis a matching hat, who knows. I already swatched, so I have the swatch here to show you. Uh, yeah, this is the swatch. This is how it knits up. Um, and the pattern calls for US size sevens, which I don't know what is in millimeters off the top of my head. I did not get gauge with the, the US size sevens. Uh, I had to go all the way down to a US five. The fabric itself is nice. Uh, it blocked out beautifully. It has a nice hand and drape. I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, it lays very nicely across the skin. Dennis was very happy with it, um, but it is a little hard on the hands when I'm knitting it. So I was a little concerned. I'm like, I bet when I'm done with this sweater, it's gonna stand up on its own. It's just, but it, it works out perfectly. And I really wanna do the tubular cast on that the pattern calls for. However, the needles that I currently have aren't sharp enough to get under uh, that I don't know, if you've ever done a tubular cast on, you know you have to pick up stitches um, in between the cast on stitches. Anyway, um, 
So yeah, the, the needles that I have aren't really good for that. I think that's all I have to say about that. Moving along, let's talk shop update because I'm having an update this Saturday, August 25th at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, I unfortunately don't have the yarn that I've dyed uh, up with me in my craft room that I forgot, totally forgot downstairs. And I, I just don't feel like running down and getting it all and bringing it back up. So to compensate, I'm just gonna flash some photos, some gorgeous photos of the yarn that will be in the Saturday's update uh, for your viewing pleasure. So, and that's probably even more clear for you to see anyway. This week it is a Volca and Nouveau base. So Volca is my Merino Nylon Cashmere fingering base uh, and Nouveau is my singles base. So that's 100% Superwash Merino. This week it's only gonna be, uh, it's gonna be exclusively Volca and Nouveau. So the colorways that will be in the shop this week will be Goth Day Cake, Moon Cusser, Tea Leaves, Angry Orchard. It's been a while since I dyed that one, but it's very autumnal friendly. And I feel like, I feel like autumn. Autumn is coming, my friends. I feel it. I can smell the pumpkin spice latte from here. That will be in the shop. And then I will also have a Strange Brew color. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun dyeing those lately. And everyone's favorite. Outlander. Outlander will be available again this week. So again, you can always subscribe to the newsletter uh, by going to my website, woolenvineyarns.com. And at the top of the website, there is a link that says newsletter. Uh, so all you have to do is click on it and enter your email. And every week you will get a non-spammy email in your mailbox, letting you know uh, what colors, colorways and bases are going to be in each update and any other uh, Vine yarns, yarngasm, news, and the like. So anyway, thank you so much. Uh, if you've already subscribed, I hope you guys enjoy the newsletter. I have a lot of fun putting it together. Thanks to Emily. I think I've gotten a little bit gif happy <laughs> with it. So, um, I don't know if you guys find that annoying whenever you get a newsletter to have all these gifts in your, uh, in it. Uh, but I, I just find them fun. It makes the process a lot more fun to type everything out and add little anecdotal gifts because who doesn't love gifts? I love GIFs. GIFs are like those little animated images that you see they're like on memes and whatnot. Anyway, having a lot of fun with those. But anyway, shop update. August 25th, 10 a.m. Eastern time. I hope you can make it. Uh, but otherwise, I think that is it for the podcast. Uh, I am going to move along to Blather, which is the segment where I chat about what's been going on in my life. Should you care to stick around? Uh, yeah, so vacation. Uh, Dennis and I went to Maine. We actually stayed in Harpswell, uh, which is where we stayed seven years ago. Uh, we stayed at this Airbnb seven years ago and we managed to get the house again this year, uh, seven years later. Uh, and it's, it was just as magical as it was seven years ago. And yeah, the house is like nestled in, in the woods, like really off the beaten path. You think like it was super hard to find. I actually took some vlog footage. I'll try and put some here. Dennis and I got a late start the day we drove up to Maine. We went to clam bake, which was really fun. That's like really delicious fried seafood. I didn't eat any fried food um, because I can't eat fried food. Is this all for clam bake? Yeah, I told you mid season, this place is, is butt. Your destination is on the west. Get a number, take a number. Dennis and I are going to clam bake because we're not dressed up enough to go anywhere else. Clam bake! Yes! After dinner, we finally hit the road again and got to the house super, like I wanna say like nine o'clock, but at nine o'clock it was super dark. And this house is really off the beaten path, as I mentioned, there's no lights on the road. He's gonna get attacked by bears. Great. I thought we were going to be eaten by bears at some point. Uh, and yeah, but eventually, eventually we found it. We found it and the house is beautiful. Like it looks, it's a little cabin and it looks like nothing on the on the outside, but on the inside, it's this beautiful. Uh, and the bed in the bedroom, there's like this floor to ceiling window and just overlooking the lake and there's pine trees. I woke up to chipmunks just 
scampering around the tree. It was it was magical. It was magical. And we went on a puffin watch, which <laughs> um, I don't know what I was expecting going on the puffin watch. I thought you'd actually get to go get like up close to the puffins. But they take a group of people out in this kind of big ferry boat. They just circle around uh, this island where all these uh, puffins inhabit along with some other wildlife and uh, native local birds. And you can't really, you really have to have like some you know, good binoculars or a good zoom lens to actually see these puffins because they're so tiny and they get they get scared off obviously very easily. But I was able to get some good shots. I'll try and insert them here, but they are so cute. It's not as exciting as a whale watch where you're actually you actually see the whale tails and you know they that is mind blowing. I definitely recommend doing a whale watch. Uh, but this is a little more you had to be like looking out for these little guys uh but you do they do tell you more about the puffins and how they're endangered and how they're trying to build up their population again and you, you definitely come away with an education and appreciation for these birds uh we did a lot of hiking on rocks and if you know me i am not the most nature friendly person. I'm, I'm indoorsy. Hi. I like being indoors where my air conditioning and wi-fi and Yarn. Yarn is hiking on rocks is a lot more exciting than doing nature trails. That's just my personal preference. Um, I just find it kind of like a game. You have to figure out where your feet are going to go next. And you do have this really gorgeous scenery. So I was all for that. All right, guys, I got to get from here all the way there. I think we can do it. And I will say I made it, I almost made it through the entire vacation without setting foot on a beach, almost. Uh, the last day before we headed out, we went to Popham Beach, which is a really beautiful beach. And if you know me, I am not a beach person by any means. I really just don't enjoy sitting on a beach. Um, but I will say this is definitely a beach worth visiting because the landscape is absolutely beautiful. Um, you go there and there's an island that you can walk to when the when the tide is out. Uh, you just have to be careful of the tides because once that tide comes back in, you you probably won't be able to get back to land. We we did walk to the island. It was a little. It felt a little touristy because everyone and their monkey's uncle was like climbing all over the rocks. Uh, and every photo that I tried getting, someone like walked into it. But still, it was really cool that you could walk out to this little island and you know climb the rocks and um, you know see see beautiful sights. Um, so yeah, there was that. Uh, we went to Pimiquid Lighthouse, uh, which was, I, I, I'm a sucker for lighthouses. I don't know about you guys, but I love, like anytime we go anywhere, if there's a lighthouse, we're going to the lighthouse. Um, not necessarily climbing it, but I just want a photo with Dennis and me in front of a lighthouse. It's, it's our thing. It's what we do. I think I'm gonna end it there, guys. Uh, thank you, thank you so much again for tuning in, for watching. If you like this video, uh, please click the subscribe button below, leave a comment. Uh, and if you haven't already, join the Yarngasm Ravelry group. It's a place to be if you want to join in our knit alongs, make alongs, giveaways, and the like. And yeah, so that said, happy knitting, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.